Good afternoon, Cyber Traders, and happy on this happy day on this 27th of September. How's everybody doing? Good to see you all. Good to see you, Ted, Kathy, JJ. Good to see you, Lawrence. Good to see you, Lita, my one and only greatest singer. <laughs> Johnny, good to see you. Chris Chanley, good to see you. All right, everybody. So. What happened to today? Well, you know what? It was a little bit of a shaky day. I know we had class that's going on, which is great, actually. Uh, I think, you know, it's nice to have days like this when there's not really that much going on. I'm, I mean, I'll be honest with you, it was kind of crappy. Uh, you know, th there's this one trade that I want to talk about really quick, the DCIIX trade. And, uh, and I, yes, made a mistake. I made a rookie mistake. Uh, and I want to tell you about it because the purpose of all of us making rookie mistakes is that we need to learn from those mistakes. And, uh, you know, I, like I told a lot of you, I was in Chicago. Some of you were with me, and uh, there was a really popular trader that was there. Her name was Linda Rasky. Maybe some of you heard of her before. Wonderful woman. Uh, went out. Her husband, uh, Damon, is a great guy. He actually went on his boat. Uh, showed me a little bit about Chicago on the rivers. It was a great experience. And, you know, but the, but the, the, the thing what's great about you know, when you surround yourself with great traders, that's how you become great. And, you know, uh, she spoke for about, I would say about an hour and a half. And I could tell you this. Within that hour and a half, an hour and 15 minutes was all the negative and bad trades that she did. And, and, and it all ended up to a happy ending the last 15 minutes, but she talked about a lot of the mistakes and the things she went through and all that stuff and, and a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, you know, it's nice to hear that other people experience them and also trade like us. So, you know, I always like to point out some of the bad things. I want to just talk about really quick about the DCIX because I was talking about, uh, yeah, it was overall, Chris, that's right. It was great. And Chris, thanks for coming. I mean, it was great seeing you there and always being, uh, you know, coming to all the events, Chris Chainley. So it's great. And it was great taking a picture of you uh, on the on the CBOE exchange. <laughs> that was awesome. Anyway, now getting back to the DCIX, you know, this stock, you know, I don't, I get really nervous trading stocks that get halted and this stock constantly got halted. I end up chasing the stock at a buck sixty nine. And when it started doing a reverse right around two dollars, I saw big orders coming in and I made a real big rookie mistake. And what my rookie mistake was, and by the way, Chris, we did talk about that. And that's right, Chris, we didn't ring the closing bell. The guy was going to kill us. He said, don't ring the bell. Remember? That was funny. So uh, getting back, I'm losing my train of thought, though, Chris. Getting back to the DCIX, anyway, I, I, had, I, I sold the stock. At, I sort of started trending down and I got out about a buck 75 and I missed that two dollar pop and I was forcing out of it the problem was my defaults was set at the wrong amount of shares so instead of getting out of the full 3,000 shares I got out of the full uh, 2,000 um, I didn't know my defaults were, were set because I, I was changing looking at different stocks and then it defaults to the old um, like I'm going to buy it and I was just so, so angry at myself. The stock backed off, it gapped down, and then I had to wait for a little uptick, and I got out of the rest. So anyway, the point that I want to get to is that, you know, we always learn from our mistakes. Great traders do, and I made a big rookie mistake. And just talking about, talking about mistakes, I want to talk about Andrea because Andrea was there too. And, you know, Andrea made a really good comment. I want to share to all of you. Andrea made a comment, and I think all of us can kind of learn from this. And he said, you know, sometimes it takes a couple of days off. Sometimes it takes a day or two just to get ready to get back into the game. You can't go in with all two feet. You have to kind of like pace yourself. So you can't like go on vacation thinking you're going to come up the next day and think you're going to you know, trade like you've been in the trading mood for the past month straight. You got to work your way into it. So a couple of good things. So that's what's so great about working together and learning from uh, being together with traders and passing ideas and showing up to these events. And hopefully a lot of you will come up to the next one. Anyway, a lot of we're going to talk about this stuff in class. Uh, let's go over a couple of things that did make some nice moves this morning because there were a couple of good ones. I mean, the real big one I think was probably Micron Technologies. Micron was probably the only one that had that really big pop right out of the gate. It went from 36 to 37. Not a huge winner, but it's been a really good swing trade overall. And, um, you know, it's, I don't know if I really want to put it on the watch list, but 
there's not really that much out there, so I'm going to put it on temporarily. If there's anything that I don't think uh, is worth watching, then I'll, I'll keep it there. And then I know some of us uh, trade a little bit on the VERI trade. That one was a really nice short, 75 to 50. The only major problem with this stock is that it's a very volatile stock. you got to be a level 4 trader. It was a great swing from August from 10 all the way to 80, right? But look, look, look what's so cool about that candlestick. Whatever goes up comes down twice as fast. Anyway, it could probably still be a short. So if you did trade it and you are a level 4 or level 5 trader, VERI has been pretty pretty good. Uh, highly rec I, I do recommend, though, you trade 100 share lots of this stock. All right? Be very, very careful. All right, a couple other ones um, that are kind of like coming out of nowhere. I would like to keep an eye on this one, overstock.com, O-S-T-K. It's got a nice little push. It's got some little nasty shakes here and there. Spread is huge. This is a scalping stock. We talked about this as phase four. So you got to scalp this stock, which is great. If you could scalp it, you'll do very, very well on that trade. Don't forget, we got that boot camp that's coming up next month on that one. The BG, um, no, not that one. The, uh, what's it? The, the AXON. Now, this one, we, we, I called it out this morning on the watch list. The stock took a big hit from 27 down to 5. It's getting a little bit of a dead cat bounce on it. So, um, I got a little bit on it. Not that much as I'd like, but this is, looks like I definitely want to keep an eye on it. Not only... Might be. I would. I like to see what it does going into the close, but it might be a little bit of a bottom fish on a swing trade. So that one is doing pretty well, also. Losers getting a little, 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 little bit dead cat bounce on the T A N H, but the stock has been up substantially from August, from a dollar to four. Don't know if I call that a dead cat bounce, but it's making back a little bit. So. Eh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I'm not completely sold on it. Yeah, you see a lot of the stocks that we're looking at that are up big are um, a lot of them that are up huge are cut, taking big, big hits, which you could see that. LCI, another scalping stock, five cents spread. If it breaks this $20 resistance, look at the breakout. Got major support levels right here back in March. Back in July, if it does break, it didn't go to 21. But remember, this is a scalping stock. Got to scalp it. Can't trade it. REV, Revlon. Wow, I didn't even know Revlon uh, was a public company. Is that the makeup company, Revlon? Or I thought it got bought out a while ago, something. I guess not, actually. Anyway, nice little push right there. Volume is just too damn low. <laughs> so... The trend, even though it looks like your friend, but when, you, when you're not tradable, you can't trade it. All right, so I don't really see anything more going into the close, guys. I mean, it's just not really pretty out there. And that's okay. It's hard to learn how to sit on your hands. So, anything I'm missing I did not call out? We've got five stocks. M-U, V-E-R-I, O-S-T-K. A-X-O-N and L-C-I. Anything I'm missing? Uh, Linda, yes, they can. Absolutely. And um, once again, that's something that we talk about in class, Linda. So talk to your education advisor and I'll explain that in more detail and how you can learn about that. We're actually covering that in class at 3 o'clock. Okay? All right. Okay, guys, so that's what we got going to this afternoon. Sometimes something will come up. Most of them are going to probably be eliminated. If there's nothing going on, don't worry about it. Tomorrow's always another day, all right? Okay, guys, listen, good luck today. Enjoy class, and uh, see you back here early in the morning. And also, guys, for all the new traders, we do start at 8.30 in the morning, not at 9, not 9.15, not 9.01. Get in there at 8.30, get in bright and early, do the pre-market, and then you'll see why uh, most money's made early in the morning. Then late afternoon. All right, guys, good luck today. Happy trading.